This is the story of Zari McKeever, a young woman who was described as having a heart of gold. She was intelligent, beautiful, kind-hearted, and always had a smile on her face, lighting up every room she stepped in. Sadly, after ending a relationship with her boyfriend who is also the father of her one-year-old daughter, her ex refused to let her move on with her life. He would become jealous and start stalking and threatening her, and would ultimately do the unimaginable. Welcome to Viral Crimes. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for more stories. This story takes us to Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. Brooklyn Park is a diverse city known for its parks, strong economy, excellent schools, and community engagement. With a population of nearly 88,000, the city is the sixth largest in Minnesota and the second largest suburb of Minneapolis-St. Paul. 23-year-old Zari McKeever was soft-spoken and very kind and always wanted to take care of everyone. She was a talented makeup artist and she loved to draw. Zaria was always full of energy and was described as courageous and beautiful, doing things others were afraid to do which was put herself out there to the world through funny TikTok videos. She started a relationship with a 22-year-old man by the name of Eric Haynes, and Zaria would later get pregnant by Eric. Hey Are y'all having a girl or a boy? Girl or boy. Girl or boy. Girl or boy. <laughs> the two would welcome a beautiful baby girl. The relationship between Zaria and Eric would fall apart, and Zaria would later enter into a new relationship. Learning that Zaria had a new boyfriend made Eric angry and extremely jealous according to Zaria's sister. He would threaten and harass Zaria for weeks following the breakup. He would also stalk Zaria and directly threaten her new boyfriend. He made a statement to Zaria and her sister, watch what's going to happen to your new boyfriend. Due to the constant harassment and threats from Eric, Zaria would be forced to take out a protective order against him. Early on November 8, 2022, on a Tuesday, Eric would finally make good on his threats. At 2.30 in the morning, Zaria was gunned down inside of her residence. Two teenagers kicked in the door to her apartment, and when Zaria confronted the intruders, one of the teens shot and killed her. Zaria's current boyfriend, who was in the upstairs bathroom at the time, heard the disturbance below. While Zari argued with someone in the front room, he ran to a bedroom, punched out the screen, and jumped from the second-story window to the ground. He heard what sounded like a barrage of gunshots shortly after. The boyfriend said he was able to escape the apartment and immediately ran to get help. The two shooters fled and jumped in the getaway vehicle that was being driven by Zaria's ex-boyfriend, Eric Haynes. Brooklyn Park Police were dispatched to Eden Park Apartments at 2.34 a.m. on November 8 on a report of a home invasion in progress. Zaria was discovered lying on the ground by responding officers, bleeding from a wound to her lower abdomen that seemed to have been caused by a gunshot. Officers tried to revive her, but she was pronounced dead. There were many gunshot holes located throughout the apartment, including ones close to the bedroom and the bathroom. Indications of a break-in can also be seen on the door's frame, which was damaged during the forced entry. The Henpin County K-9 unit found the weapon hidden in the wheel well of a Dodge Charger. Forensic testing on the gun showed it matched the casings located in McKeever's apartment. The day before she was murdered, Zaria revealed to her boyfriend that Eric had been stalking, harassing, and threatening her for weeks. On the day of the shooting, Eric had followed Zaria in a vehicle and knocked on her apartment door. She had also recently spotted friends of Eric around her apartment complex. Video footage from the complex showed a car associated with Eric outside numerous times in the days leading up to Zaria's murder. Two teenage brothers aged 15 and 17 were determined to be the shooters. The 15-year-old is suspected to be the one that shot Zaria. The teen fired the gun several times in the apartment and also managed to shoot his 17-year-old brother. Surveillance footage from the apartment shows two people leaving the apartment shortly after the shooting one of them was limping, while the other was trying to help. Eric, who was waiting in the getaway vehicle, transported the teens to the hospital, where they were arrested. Once in police custody, the juveniles implicated Eric in the crime. After the murder, Eric admitted to his role in the crime when questioned by investigators. Eric told them that he was angry over his relationship with Zaria ending and that she had a new boyfriend. 
He stated that he asked two teenage brothers that he knew to carry out the crime for him. On the day of the murder, he said that he drove the two teens to Zarya's apartment while he waited in the car. He instructed the boys to beat up Zarya's new boyfriend and to kill Zarya if she got in their way, but prosecutors believed the boys were instructed to kill the new boyfriend and not just beat him up. A woman still in shock after her sister's tragic murder. That is just so messed up that this is her, this is her story, you know? We said that she was killed inside her Brooklyn Park home this week. Two teenagers are among those charged in her death. And as WCCO's Alan Henry reports, the victim's sister thinks that she died protecting someone else. Me and my sister went somewhere and her child's father was following us. It was just after 2.30 on Tuesday morning that Brooklyn Park officers were dispatched to these apartments on a possible home invasion. When they arrived, they found 23-year-old Zaria McKeever shot multiple times. Police say this man, 23-year-old Eric Haynes, McKeever's ex, had been harassing and following her for weeks. She was better in her life and she knew that he was a downfall and he was, you know, part of the reason why things were going the way they were for her. Police say Haynes admitted to buying a gun and giving it to two teenagers. He told them to break in and beat up the victim's new boyfriend while he waited in the car. So you found someone that was dumber than you and you had them do this. Now all you guys' life are ruined. You guys ruined our lives, took her away from us and her daughter. Like, it's just, it's crazy, off or what? It's unclear why her sister was the one killed, but Epps has a theory. Knowing her, she thought she could defuse the situation because she knew the guys. They were her baby dad's friends. Epps is hoping her sister's story saves someone else. Eric Haynes was later charged with second-degree murder by prosecutors. They said that he set up all aspects of the crime, gave the teenagers the murder weapon, and recruited the boys with the instructions for them to carry out the hit. The Hennepin County Attorney's Office put out a statement that read. The investigation revealed that Mr. Haynes organized and planned this crime because he was angry that Ms. McKeever had ended their relationship. He violated no contact orders protecting her, developed this plan, and exploited his influence over two teenagers to have them carry it out. A look into Haynes' criminal record showed that he had two previous convictions for violating domestic abuse protection orders for protection in 2019. The juveniles, who were 15 and 17 years old at the time of the incident, entered into a plea deal into which their cooperation resulted in their not being prosecuted as adults and would send them to juvenile detention, where they could serve less than two years, instead of prison. According to the prosecution, their cooperation led to the charging of two more suspects in the case. Two additional adults have been charged. Hennepin County Attorney Mary Moriarty announcing aiding and offender charges against the sister of Eric Haynes and her boyfriend. Haynes is the man charged with murder, accused of giving two teens a gun and sending them into the Brooklyn Park home of his ex-girlfriend, Zaria McKeever, where the teens shot and killed her. As her family and the community are grieving, we have continued to pursue justice and accountability. So we just don't trust them. But Zaria's family is still unhappy with the county attorney. They protested Moriarty's decision to give the two juveniles, including the 15-year-old shooter, a plea deal that would send them to the Red Wing Juvenile Prison for two years. They've met with Attorney General Keith Ellison and want him to take over the case. In a statement, Ellison said the Attorney General's office stands prepared to help in any way. We believe we could assist by bringing some sense of comfort and confidence to the family. He understands to reform juveniles, but murder is murder and murderers should be charged as such. Moriarty's approach with juveniles is laid out in a memo recently sent to her youth prosecution staff that says they'll use adult certification less often to keep juvenile offenders out of the adult criminal system, which they believe protects community safety more in the long run. Moriarty says the juvenile plea deal and their required cooperation is what led to the two new adult suspects being charged. Because we never stopped investigating even after the police made their initial arrests. But the victim's family is unfazed in their opinion. We don't trust you and we want it in the attorney general's hand. Both suspects are now being held without bail. The family as well as many others are outraged at the plea deal offered to the juveniles and they feel the teens should be charged as adults because they committed an adult crime. In a statement from the prosecutor's office, they said. Adult prison provides little to no opportunity for rehabilitation, and for children, is counterproductive. 
youth sent directly to the adult system have far worse outcomes than those given the benefit of juvenile programming, they are less likely to gain employment, more likely to be impoverished, and much more likely to commit crimes in the future. It should, therefore, be a last resort, as it is here. In an unforeseen turn of events, the governor has intervened in the case of Zaria McKeever's murder, assigning the state's top prosecutor to handle it, instead of the county attorney Mary Moriarty. Governor Tim Waltz exercised his statutory authority to assign Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison to handle the case. They have set a very dangerous precedent. Hennepin County Attorney Mary Moriarty, in a press conference attended by family of murder victim Zaria McKeever, defended her prosecutorial decisions involving the 15-year-old accused of shooting McKeever to death, a day after Governor Tim Walls and Attorney General Keith Ellison pulled the case from Moriarty against her will. I am keeping a promise. They are not. Although Moriarty campaigned on juvenile reform, Ellison argued that Moriarty's plea deal for the 15-year-old that would give him two years in a juvenile prison is too lenient for what Ellison calls a cold-blooded execution. They are entitled to their opinion, but their actions here show that they also don't really believe fully in democracy because they are stopping me from doing the job voters elected me to do. While McKeever's family steadfastly believes Moriarty was wrong in how she handled their loved one's killer. You're here to prosecute, not public defend, not offer slaps on the wrist, not give timeouts. Zaria's family is still continuing their fight for justice. What happened to Zaria McKeever is beyond tragic. She ended a relationship with her ex and wanted to move on with her life and be happy, but her ex refused to let her go and instead decided that because she didn't want to be with him anymore, she didn't deserve to live, leaving his daughter without both of her parents. My condolences to her friends and family. May you continue to heal and one day find peace. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.